of David Cameron talking openly about how if he becomes Prime Minister, he will give us the truth about extraterrestrials and UFOs. Uh, do you know what? I'm so excited because on tonight's show, we got the guy who forced him to talk about that at a press conference. He made him answer that question. Will you tell us the truth about UFOs? Uh, his name's Richard Hall from richplanet.net. You, sir, are like a conquering hero. Welcome to the show. Delighted to be on the show. Sterling work at the press conference. I punched the air and cheered when I, when I watched you there. So the first thing I want to say to you is congratulations. Thank you very much. I want to talk to you about some of your research. From what I'm aware, you outline uh, around about seven different types of, of aliens, of extraterrestrials. Because ordinarily, when people think of aliens, they'll think of the classic sort of the grey, is it is it called, with the big head, little things. Usually people think of that. But there's seven different types in total, is that right? Well, um, somebody called um, Clifford Stone. Now, he worked for the U.S. Army. And his role in the army, and this is going to sound really unbelievable to some of your listeners, was, was whenever the Americans shot down uh, a UFO and there were alien survivors, it was his job to interface with those surviving aliens. People would be sitting at home thinking, what a load of rubbish. I believe he is 100% bona fide witness. And his claim is that in 1989, when he left the U.S. Army, the U.S. government had a publication called the EBE Guidebook, and that stands for Extraterrestrial Biological Entity, which he claims described the physical characteristics of 57 different species of alien. Look him up on the net, Clifford Stone. The 57 varieties, like, like the Heinz 57. Yeah, and apparently that was um, something that was joked about um, in the forces because it was that number. Okay, so you're narrowing it down to about uh, seven distinct types, uh, uh, and this is, you know, just through basically research uh, and looking at all of the different accounts. Let's go through them. Uh, first of all, the small grey, what, what is that, Rich? They're sort of uh, three to five feet tall with uh, grey, uh, tough skin, with extremely large almond-shaped eyes. Uh, they are believed to come from a place called Zeta Reticuli, and they, they, they have a rather unpleasant diet, which consists of um, the, the insides of um, um, bovine creatures, i.e. the insides of a cow or bull, soft tissue organs, um, which are then pureed with um, blood plasma. So um, they eat cows' internal organs? Yeah. yeah. And that explains the uh, cow mutilations that happen uh, across Texas and, and in parts of Scotland? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and this information comes from people like Thomas Costello, uh, who used to work as a security guard at a secret underground base in a place called Dulce in New Mexico, where there was allegedly um, a four and a half cubic mile um, secret base which houses um, more than one breed of alien. As I understand it, the greys, the small greys, are they not known for being quite smelly? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is this is apparently they have certain um, physiological problems um, due due to their own evolution, uh, and one of those is that their internal digestive system uh, doesn't work properly, uh, and they actually secrete waste products through the skin, which gives them this extremely bad um, smell. Uh, the other thing that's happened to them over a, a longer evolutionary period than you know than than us is that they're their reproductive organs don't work either, so that they they basically reproduce um, with using cloning. So the small grey. Now, are they related to the large grey, or, or are we talking about two separate entities here? Um, I believe they're separate entities, but perhaps you know there is some um, you know linkage there in the in the dim and distant past. Mm -hmm. What does uh, the what does the large grey look like? Another species of okay. Alien? The large grey has a, a similar skin uh, to the small grey. Um, their height is often exaggerated by humans when describing them. They're about seven to eight feet tall. Um, and again, large almond-shaped eyes. So, moving on to the reptilians then, what would the reptilians look like? Well, um, they have the look of a reptile. Um, they have scales. They have um, uh, two tiny slits for their nose. They have fangs. and uh, Some of them have horns. And do, um, they, do they communicate? How do they... Do they can they talk or...? Yeah, uh, apparently there's a language which is used at um, 
up this uh, base in Dulce, and I think it's called Eshu. Um, but allegedly, some of them can speak hundreds of languages. Uh, the the Drago reptilian is alleged to be extremely intelligent and very sinister. Very sinister. So let's move on now to the to the Syrians. What do the Syrians look like? Because I've never heard of those guys before. Okay. Well, they are alleged to have. Um, they're, they're very human looking, but they have um, vertically slit pupils and an extremely high forehead. And they are alleged to come from the uh, Sirius B star system. Mm -hmm. Now, um, some people have claimed that, that the Syrians were involved in the 60s and 70s with both uh, two secret projects that the American um, black ops um, were, were undertaking, the Philadelphia experiment mm -hmm. and the Montauk project. They believed so, to have been involved. So are you it. telling me that the American government actually cooperated uh, in your opinion, with the with the Syrian uh, aliens, yeah, with the Syrians, and in 1954 with the tall with the tall grey alien. In 54, there was supposed to have been um, visitation by one group of aliens, followed by um, a second group, uh, and the second group, the tall grey, they actually formed a contract or, or a treaty known as the Grey Order Treaty. This is the it's been written about quite a lot. The Eisenhower Tall Grey Grey Order Treaty. So hang but, on, Eisenhower was the president of the U.S. Are you telling me that he met with the Large Greys and signed a treaty? Yes, I am telling you that. This is it. This is big stuff. This is. I mean, it's a lot for me to take on board. But what uh, I'm just going to recap so that we know where we are. We got we got the Syrians. Uh, who have cooperated with humanity, uh, according to some researchers. We've got the reptilians, who you were saying have kind of got a sinister aspect. And then the greys, who have also cooperated with humanity at points. Mm -hmm. uh, let's move to the Anunnaki. Okay, yeah, the Anunnaki. Um, this comes from people like uh, Zachariah Sitchin, who have researched ancient uh, Sumerian tablets. Which, which spoke of uh, alien beings which came to the Earth uh, hundreds of thousands of years ago. Now, let me just clarify. Sumer was an ancient civilization, almost prehistoric. Yeah, uh, yeah. And the Sumerian tablets, just to back you up here, yeah. if people look into this, you can. These are, some of these are available in the London Museum, and what you're saying is they is true. They do talk about planets and and, yeah. and, and you know species coming off planets onto this planet. They they read like sci-fi. Uh, yeah. It's unbelievable. So, so the Anunnaki... Tablets. Has, has a picture which is clearly the sun with uh, ten planets going around it. This was like, you know, in mm. thousands of years BC. That's right, this is a prehistoric civilization that understood things like the solar system. Now, how that was possible uh, is difficult to explain with mainstream history. What, what, do you want to describe the Anunnaki? Yeah, they're, su they're supposedly uh, very human in appearance, but they're, they're larger than us, and they're supposed to have, uh, basically, they, they needed slaves to do the work um, after they'd come to Earth. And the, the sort of knuckle-dragging hominid, which was, which was um, on Earth at the time, was Our not good ancestors. for them. You know, they would just run away. So they decided to, to create a hybrid race, which had some of their own genetics in it, and some of the, uh, you know, the, the, one of the ancient hominids, and created Homo sapien. Uh, and then, and they then left the Earth, you know, sort of several hundred thousand years ago, and then we are then direct descendants of that race. So the Anunnaki look similar to us, but taller. Yeah, that's that's the theory. Yeah. And they interbred with our cavemen ancestors. They crossbred and made the race. So we're, they're our relations. They're our relatives. Yeah, yeah. And which is why um, they're described as gods by, you know, the, the, the Sumerian people. That's how they saw them, because they came down from the sky, they were far superior, they, you know, and there's lots of descriptions um, of, of beings coming down in, chariot, in, 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 in bright chariots in their, in, in their ancient um, manuscripts. And I want to get the final one from you. Uh, the Nordics. Now, I've, I've heard of the Nordics before, mm -hmm. but I want you to describe them to us and tell us what are they. Well, again, the Nordics are alleged to be extremely tall, uh, they have blonde or red hair with blue eyes and are described as extremely attractive. And I believe they come from uh, the Pleiades star system. Mm -hmm. Now, one contactee who is alleged to have had many, many contacts with the Nordics is somebody called Billy Myers. 
and uh, he's a real enigma. He's a, an elderly gentleman who lives in, in Switzerland. And w w what's supposed to have happened there is the, the Nordics, um, they weren't happy with what was going on on Earth. You know, with uh, you know, with uh, the way the, the Earth was developing, and that we were ruining all of the resources, etc. So they they decided to choose a neutral country, and they went to Switzerland. And they actually they're supposed to have contacted one of the four. So I think in Switzerland the presidency goes around four different people. They, they contacted one of those people, but he wouldn't he wouldn't cooperate with them. So they then they then picked this old this guy. Um, I mean, the, the, the visitations go right back to his childhood, and he's got some absolutely phenomenal photographs of, of, of UFOs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, mm -hmm. and I believe the American government have tried to to get hold of Billy Myers or contact Billy Myers. Um, so he's another person I would recommend people read about. He's just absolutely. His story is fascinating. This is mind-blowing stuff. Do you, it is. Rich Hall, do you believe in all of this stuff? Do you think this is all true, or, or do you think some of it might be true? Okay. Or what? What's I, your take I on believe, it? I believe a lot of it is true. I believe Clifford Stone 100% with, with this book and his role in the, in the U.S. black ops programs. Mm. Um, was he was involved whenever, there was, whenever they had a recovered UFO. And they were trying to shoot, shoot them down, basically, from 1947. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, that's been uh, report. That's admitted now. That's been reported in the mainstream media news. Uh, there was certainly uh, uh, there was a law across the UK, a directive uh, across the UK to shoot down UFOs. Uh, like I say, all, all people need to do is Google that. That's been reported in the last week or so. So that's admitted. Uh, uh, do you know? I I don't know what to make of all this. But like I say, Richard Hall, in my mind, you're a conquering hero. That moment with David Cameron, getting him to go on record and say the stuff that he did. Uh, he says now that he will come out with the truth about ufos if he's elected your website richplanet.net is brilliant uh, i hope to have you on again in the future uh, thanks for joining us man okay then nick i really enjoyed talking to you it's kerrang it's the night before simply because I want to hear it again. Uh, here is the moment uh, when David Cameron, uh, MP, possible next Prime Minister, uh, came face to face uh, with that chap we were just talking to, our guest. Uh, uh, listen to this. This is a great, great, great moment. And the radio station that he's referring to uh, is, of course, uh, Kerrang. Have a listen to this. In uh, July last year, the respected scientist and astronaut, Dr. Edgar Mitchell, who was the sixth man to walk on the moon, spoke on a British <coughs> radio station. He said that the American government had had contact with extraterrestrials on multiple occasions and that these were ongoing. He spoke about the Roswell event of 1947, where wreckage from a downed UFO was recovered and found to contain alien bodies. He said that this event was real and had been covered up by governments for many years. Do you agree with me, uh, David? that the British people have the right to know if we have been visited. And if so, when you become Prime Minister, as I know you will, um, will you seek to lift the veil of secrecy and tell the public the truth that they deserve that has been covered up for all of these years? Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I told you I didn't plant the questions. Um, <laughs> <laughs> OK, so Cameron starts being a I, wacky um... funster here. I'm convinced we have been visited by alien life forms, and, and, and one of them is the Trade Secretary, Peter Mandelson. <laughs> but our guest gets back up and pushes the point. But seriously, quite, no, sir, sir, quite seriously, sir, no, because I'm going to give you a serious answer. I'm, I'm going to give you a serious answer. I don't want anyone to take the subject no, 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 I'm going to give you a serious answer now, honestly. You can have the mic, after I've finished, you can have the microphone back. No, look, no, I think I have no idea whether there is uh, intelligent life out there and no idea whether any, um, uh, any sightings that have taken place or incidents that have taken place uh, have any uh, basis in, in truth. All, all I know is I do believe in freedom of information and openness and if uh, this question has been asked from time to time of governments in this country and indeed in the US and I think we should be as open and as clear as possible. What's tended to happen when people look at the Roswell incident or people look at uh, pictures and other things that have happened is a rational explanation tends to be produced to try and show that uh, it, it's not 
uh, what those who, who believe in UFOs um, uh, uh, suggest. But I think we should be as open as possible. So I'd be quite happy to give you a guarantee that if I was Prime Minister, I would always be entirely uh, open and frank about these things. I don't think any of us have any clue whether there is any intelligent uh, life out there, and it's certainly not something that any government should seek to hide from anybody. Sorry about the jokes, I just couldn't resist them. It was too... I never get that question, so it was like, you know, a bit of resistance. There you go, how about that? So our interview that we did with the sixth man to walk on the moon, Dr. Edgar Mitchell, is forcing high-profile politicians like David Cameron to take the whole issue seriously. Man, that's amazing. If you want to check out that guy's website, uh, website it's richplanet.net, and uh, he was our guest uh, just moments ago. Okay, this is Orson here on Kerrang!